Good morning, friends. <clears throat> Welcome to another day here at Miss Cassidy Creates. Today, we are doing a yoga story. Woo! So for those of you that haven't joined us for one of these before, what we do is we go through a story that we hopefully all are a little familiar with, but we add some yoga and movement to help wake our bodies up and tell the story using our whole body. So I hope it's a nice day wherever you are. It is a little gloomy here in Pittsburgh. It is a little overcast and rainy, but you know, it's not so bad. It's still pretty warm out and it's, uh, I don't mind the rainy days. And it's a great, quiet, calm way of doing a little yoga today. So the only things you need to follow along today are your body. You just need enough room to move around. I have a mat here just because that's what I like to use, but you don't need to use one. If you do have one and you want to use it though, go right ahead. Of course, whatever makes your heart happy. Today we are going to be going on a story of the wonderful Wizard of Oz. You may have seen the movie The Wizard of Oz before. It's got a bunch of famous songs in it, like Somewhere Over the Rainbow, We're Off to See the Wizard, If I Only Had a Brain, A Heart, the knife. Ba -da 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 -ba -da. So you might already know the story, but did you know that it is based on a book by Frank L. Baum called The Wonderful Wizard of Oz? And it is just a little bit different than the movie. So as we go on our yoga adventure today, you might go, hey, I don't remember this part of the movie, but that's okay because it's a totally, not totally different, but it's a new version that maybe you're not familiar with. So therefore, it gets to be something new and exciting for you. The book actually came out well before the movie, and there's a whole bunch of uh, books in this wonderful series about Oz and the wizard and Dorothy and all of these wonderful cast of characters that we've gotten to know. So today we're going to go with the original, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. So all you need to do, make sure you got enough room back here. Good. Got enough room up here. Good. How about over here? Okay. How about over here? Perfect. You've got enough room. I'm going to go ahead and kick my slippers off so I get my bare feet out on my mat. I am wearing my green today because we are going to the Emerald City after all. And we're going to go ahead and get started in just a minute here. So we're going to start standing in mountain pose. Nice and even, and I'll back up so you can see more of my body, hopefully. Just standing nice and even, and here we go. Dorothy is a young girl who lives with her Aunt Em and Uncle Henry and a dog, Toto, on a farm on the Kansas prairie. So since Dorothy's on a farm, we're going to start by pretending we're a farmer. Sitting on a tractor. So go ahead and sit down like you're on your tractor, and you're going to go work on your farm in Kansas. Very good, keep your balance together. Your feet should just be shoulder width apart, not too wide out. And you can reach up, you can reach out. One day, Dorothy and Toto are caught up in a cyclone that deposits them and the farmhouse into Munchkin County in the land of Oz. So we're gonna come stand up and we're gonna twist our arms around ourselves like we're a twister. So take this right arm here, and then take your left arm underneath and twist it up. Twist it around like you're a twister. Good, now go ahead and why don't you switch and bring that left arm, right arm, make a twister on this side. The falling house has killed the wicked witch of the east, the evil ruler of the munchkins. Do you remember when the house fell on the witch? What could you see? You could see her feet, that's right. So we're gonna sit with our feet straight out in front of us like we have our feet out from underneath the house that has fallen on the witch. Very good, straight back, straight legs, legs right out in front of you. The good witch of the north arrives with three grateful munchkins and gives Dorothy the magical silver shoes that once belonged to the wicked witch. Did you know in the book they're silver shoes, not ruby slippers? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna point our toes to look at our silver slippers and then flex them on up. Look at those shiny, glittery slippers. Give them another point. Bring them back up to a flex. Point and flex and point and flex. 
The good witch tells Dorothy that the only way she can return home is to follow the yellow brick road to the Emerald City and ask the great and powerful Wizard of Oz to help her. So we're gonna come back up to standing and we're gonna make ourselves the great and powerful Wizard of Oz. Put your feet out a little bit wider, put your hands out, make yourself great and powerful Wizard of Oz. Can you say that? Great and powerful Wizard of Oz. Very good. As Dorothy embarks on her journey, the Good Witch of the North kisses her on the forehead, giving her magical protection from harm. So keep this pose, and you're gonna bring your fingers into your forehead. You're gonna focus all your energy right on your forehead where the Good Witch of the North has kissed you on the head, wishing you all of your best luck. Good job. Go ahead and reach back out for the great and powerful Wizard of Oz. On her way down the road, Dorothy meets a scarecrow and releases him from his pole. She learns that the scarecrow wants a brain and encourages him to come and meet the wizard with her. So we're going to bring our feet in. And now we're going to do a nice T pose here where we are the scarecrow. And we can play with, you can bend your arms and your legs here like you're laying on your pole like you're a scarecrow, or you can come straight out here, or you can do a little bit of all of it and really stretch those muscles out. Good job. Next, she applies oil from a can to the rusted joints of a tin woodsman and learns that he wants a heart and encourages him to come and meet the wizard with her. So we're gonna come back down the mountain and we're just gonna put our hands right at our heart. Take a nice deep breath in. Take that breath out. Deep breath in. Deep breath out, in through your nose, out through your mouth. Next, she meets a cowardly lion who wants more than anything to have courage and, encourage, and she encourages him to come and meet the wizard with her as well. So we're gonna come and sit crisscross applesauce. We're gonna put our hands down here and we're gonna make a great big lion roar face, ready? <sighs> Good job, let's do it one more time like you're the cowardly lion trying to scare somebody. Wait, one, two, three. Good job. After several adventures, the travelers arrive at the Emerald City and ask the guardian of the gates, who or meets the guardian of the gates, sorry, who asks them to wear green tinted spectacles to keep their eyes from being blinded by the city's brilliance. So come up on your knees. We're going to sit back on our heels, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to give ourselves spectacles to look out over the bright and si shining Emerald City. Good job. Each one is called to see the wizard. He agrees to help them all if they kill the Wicked Witch of the West, who rules over Winky Country. The guardians warn them that no one has ever managed to defeat the witch. If we're going to go defeat the witch, we've got to come up. You're gonna put your feet sideways like you're on a surfboard. Turn those front toes out to the front. Put your hands out and you're gonna bend your knees because we are gonna be tough warriors. Bend that front knee and lean into it. We're tough warriors going to fight the Wicked Witch of the West. The Wicked Witch of the West sees the travelers appear or approaching with her one telescopic eye. She sends a pack of wolves to tear them to pieces, but the Tin Woodsman defeats them with his ax. All right, we're gonna to switch to the other side. So put that other foot forward with your toes going forward. Bend that front knee and put those arms out because we're attacking those wolves. She sends wild crows to peck their eyes out, but the scarecrow defeats them. So now we're gonna come down into a lunge and you're gonna bend this front leg underneath you to be a pigeon. So this is pigeon pose, just like those crows that came to attack, even though the scarecrow managed to beat them. Good job, make sure that you've got that leg straight out behind you. Make sure you've got that foot tucked in underneath up front. She summons a swarm of black bees to sting them next, but they are killed while trying to sting the Tin Woodsman while the Scarecrow's straw hides the others. Very good, so you're gonna take that foot that's in the front, step it back like you're in a push-up pose and bring the other one forward. This time, we're gonna think of our back leg that's stretched out back here, like our bee stinger. Can you go buzz, buzz, very good. 
she sends a dozen of her soldiers to attack them, the Wicked Witch of the West does. But the cowardly lion stands firm to repel them. He's being so brave, so ready, we're gonna hop back onto our feet, stand on up, stand nice and proud and brave, like you are the very courageous lion. He's not so cowardly right now, is he? No, stand nice and brave, put all of that power in your chest. I'm brave. Finally, the Wicked Witch sends the winged monkeys to capture Dorothy, Toto, and the Cowardly Lion. She unstuffs the Scarecrow, she dents the Woodman, and she catches the Cowardly Lion and Toto. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go into our monkey straddle pose. So put your legs out to the side. Very good. Squat on down like we're monkeys. The flying monkeys. Good job, good job. Straighten that back. Dorothy is forced to become the witch's personal slave while the witch schemes to steal her silver shoes. So let's go ahead and let's scheme with our fingers. I'm scheming. Come stand up, straighten those legs. Come on back to mountain and keep scheming like you're the wicked witch. Can you do a witch's cackle? my pretty. Very good job. The witch successfully tricks Dorothy out of one of her silver shoes. She's so angry that Dorothy throws a bucket of water at the witch and is shocked to see her melt away. All right, so we're here in mountain and we're going to slow melt on down like we're the witch. So let's put our hands up and then slowly take your time. You can melt all the way down. I am melting. I'm melting. Come on to your knees and we're gonna fold over into child's pose. Good job, chin to thighs. The witch's subjects rejoice at being freed from her tyranny and they help to restuff the scarecrow and mend the tin woodsman. Come on back and sit up on your heels and we're gonna put our hands up in the air like we're rejoicing because we've been freed from the evil wicked witch of the West. Good job, we're celebrating. Very nice. The citizens of Winky Country ask the Tin Woodsman to become their ruler, which he agrees to do after helping Dorothy return to Kansas. So we're gonna come stand up, and just like the Cowardly Lion was being very brave, we're now gonna stand nice and strong in our mountain pose because we are the Tin Woodsman as the ruler, and we stand strong when we are the ruler, huh? Nice and strong, nice and strong. You can even put your hands on your hips if you want, if that makes you feel stronger. Dorothy asks the winged monkeys to carry her and her friends back to Emerald City and to the great and powerful Wizard of Oz. Do you remember what we did for our Wizard of Oz pose? That's right, ready? Great and powerful Wizard of Oz. Make yourself nice and big, nice and big. Good job, good job. Wiggle those fingers if you want. Just wake them up a little bit. Hey, fingers. The monkeys explain that by using the golden cap left behind by the Wicked Witch, Dorothy can summon them two more times. So we're gonna come back into our squat of the winged monkeys. Good job. And they can help Dorothy two more times because she has a magical object left over from the witch. Good job, keep that back straight. That's the hardest part for me when I'm doing my monkey pose, but I bet you're doing great. Good job. When Dorothy and her friends meet the Wizard of Oz again, Toto tips over a screen in a corner of the throne room and reveals the wizard. But sadly, he's just an ordinary old man who came to Oz long ago from Omaha. All right, we're gonna come up. He came over in a balloon, so we're gonna put our hands above our heads. We're gonna hold our uh, hot air balloon over our head. Good job. He provides the scarecrow with a head full of bran, pins, and needles, which he calls a lot of brand new brains. That's pretty funny. So come on down, point to that head again. Let's focus all of our energy there. The Tin Woodsman with a silk heart stuffed with sawdust. Bring those hands down to our heart, put all of our energy there, good job. And the cowardly lion, a, pour, a potion that gives him courage. 
and then down to our mountain to be nice and brave. Their faith in the power and his powers gives their items a focus for their desires. He decides to take Dorothy and Toto home and go back to Omaha in his balloon. So because our friends believed in the wizard so much, they believe that these things he gave them are what gave them their powers, but really, they had it inside them all along, didn't they? That's right. Oh, there's Baby Boy running around. <laughs> Very good. Hold that mountain nice straight back. There you go. At the send-off, the wizard appoints the Scarecrow to rule in his stead, which he agrees to do after he helps Dorothy return to Kansas. So we're going to put our arms up again like we're in our balloon. Then reach up forward. Bend down and we're going to go to downward dog because we're about to talk about Toto, our dog friend. Reaching your heels towards the ground. Hi, baby boy. After the set, oh, that's Toto chases a kitten, a kitten into the crowd. And Dorothy goes after him. But the ropes holding the balloon break. And the Wizard of Oz floats away. So bring your feet back up to your hands. Roll on up. And we're going to put our hands back above our head like we're the balloon. And we're going to bring our foot up like we're floating away. We're the wizard on his balloon floating away without Dorothy. Because Toto chased a kitten. Do you think he chased a kitten that looks like Baby Boy who was acting crazy? Probably. And Ozzy and tells Dorothy that Glinda, the good witch of the South, may be able to help her return home. So the travelers begin their journey to see Glinda's castle. Go ahead and bring that foot down and we're gonna tilt over to the side like we're making our own castle. Good job, tilting over to the side. Feel that stretch all along here. Good job. On the way, the lion kills a giant spider who is terrorizing the animals of the forest. Sounds like that courage potion worked, didn't it? So go ahead and spread those legs out. It's almost like our uh, monkey pose, but we're gonna squat down. We're gonna wrap our hands behind our feet to be a spider. Spider, good job. Seems like that lion got pretty brave after all if he's gonna defeat a terrorizing spider. Oh, a giant spider. The creatures of the forest ask the lion to become their king, which he agrees to do after Dorothy returns home to Kansas. They arrive at the castle and meet Glinda, the good witch. So we're going to come back up. We're going to make our castle again. And we're going to dip over to the other side. Good job. Making our beautiful castle that Glinda lives in. Good job, good job. Glinda greets them and reveals that Dorothy's silver shoes can take her anywhere she wants to go. So come on up. Bring those arms down and we're gonna slowly come back down to sitting. Hi, baby boy. Put those feet out in front of you. And then you're gonna fold down to touch those silver slippers on your feet. Good job, hi buddy. You smelling my stinky feet? What are you doing? Reach for those silver shoes that the witch gave you, the good witch. Dorothy embraces her friends. I think we missed the part. Keep reaching for those shoes. Sorry guys, hold on. Glinda greets them and reveals that her shoes can take her home anytime she wants. We did say that, didn't we? All right, that's okay. So go ahead, put those arms up, reach all the way down, touch those silver shoes. Good job, keep reaching. This is a really good stretch for the back of our legs. You should feel it in the back where your hamstrings are and your calves. Good job, good job, good job. If you wanna reach up again and fold back over, good job. Oh, these silver shoes. Do you think Dorothy's gonna be able to get home? How does she get home? Do you remember? Do you think that's gonna be the same in the book as it was in the movie? I don't know, we're gonna to have to wait and see, huh? Good job. Keep holding. Sorry, friends. I think I'm just having slight technical difficulties. There we go. Dorothy embraces all of her friends, all of whom will be returned to their kingdoms using the magical golden cap. So you're going to reach around yourself. You're going to hug yourself real tight. 
hug yourself real tight like you're embracing your best friends, like you're holding your friends after you haven't seen them this whole time. The first time you get to see them, go ahead and open up again and hug yourself. Good, give yourself a nice tight squeeze as hard as you can, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. The scarecrow is going to return to Emerald City. So put our hands back to our head where our scarecrow's brains live. The Tin Man to Winky Country. Come on down and bring those hands to the heart. And the Lion to the Forest where they were all will become rulers. So we're gonna come back into crisscross applesauce, put our hands down here and we're gonna be our lion one more time. Ready, nice big roar. One, two, three. Good, one more time. One, two, three. Good job. After their friends are returned to their new kingdoms, the cap will be given to the king of the winged monkeys, freeing him and his band. Very good. So we're going to come back up to standing. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a jump out and we're going to go monkey. And then go the other way. Monkey. Do it one more. Monkey. Good. And monkey. Very nice. Swish those arms a bit. Dorothy takes Toto in her arms, knocks her heels together three times, and wishes to return home. So it is just like in the movie. So let's put those feet together. Can you go up on your toes? And then we're gonna knock our heels together three times. Ready? One, two, three. Good job. What does she say? That's right. There's no place like home. Let's do it all together. Ready? There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Good job. Instantly, Dorothy begins whirling around through the air and rolling onto the grass of the Kansas prairie up to the farmhouse. So we're gonna come out to our star pose again and we're gonna go over here like we're being, whoa, tossed about by the twister and then back this way, tossed about this way, oh my goodness. Lean forward with that foot behind you. Good job. Lean backwards with the other foot in front of you. Pah! And then we land. She runs to her Auntie M and says, I'm so glad to be home again. Put your hands on your heart. Come on back down to our nice, easy crisscross applesauce. Ha! <sighs> and what does Dorothy say? There's no place like home. Very good, friends. I think it's important to remember that in this interesting time where we feel like maybe we're stuck at home or a lot. This is a great so story about how there's no place quite as wonderful as home. And even if the grass seems greener, it's always good to be in your own backyard. Very nice. So let's go ahead and just sit here in our crisscross applesauce pose. You can close your eyes if you want. We're just going to take a couple nice deep breaths. Ready? Deep breath in through your nose. Deep breath out through your mouth. In through your nose. Out through your mouth. In through your nose, out through your mouth. One more in through your nose, out through your mouth. Very good. Now you can stay sit sit. You can stay sitting right as you are, or if you're more comfortable sitting with your legs out in front of you, you can lay down if you want. However, you want to be comfy, but find a way to sit that's nice and comfy for you. And then we're gonna do a little bit of our mindfulness to help bring our minds in. We just worked our bodies out a whole lot. Now we gotta use our minds and get ready for a wonderful Tuesday. So go ahead and close your eyes if you like. Keep taking a nice deep breath. And we're gonna think about home, just like Dorothy did. So I want you to think about what are the things that make you feel like you're at home? Is it the roof over your head? Is it your favorite blankie on your bed? Is it the people that make up your home? Is it your pets? Think about all the things that make you feel at home. Very good. Now what I want you to do is I want you to imagine your favorite spot in your home, your very favorite place to be. 
So whether that's in your bedroom, or that's in the living room, or that's in the kitchen, wherever your favorite place to be. And I want you to close your eyes. And I want you, baby boy, what are you doing? Oh boy. Uh, and I want you to imagine everything about that space with your eyes closed. What can you imagine about it? Think about all the things you see. What color are the walls? What color is the furniture? Is there carpet or hardwood? Are there tables and lamps or is there an overhead light? What are all of the different things in that room? What does that spot smell like? What does it feel like? What do you like to do when you're sitting in your favorite spot? Good job, friends. And then the last thing we're gonna do, we're gonna imagine our home. And we're gonna imagine if we had to fly far, far, far away from it, like we're Dorothy. So and picture yourself, close your eyes and picture yourself flying far, far away from your home, far, far away, maybe on an adventure, maybe make new friends. But then what are the things you would think about when you clicked your heels to get you back home? Do you think about that favorite spot in your house? Do you think about the people in your home? Do you think about your favorite snacks in the fridge? What are the things that you would think about to get you back to your home when you click your heels three times? I would think of my kitties, of my kitchen, and of my very own bed. Those are the three things. Very nice, friends. Take a couple more deep breaths. Deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your nose, out through your mouth. One more in through your nose, out through your mouth. Very good. All right, if you've been sitting still that whole time and you feel like you're gonna jump out of your skin, go ahead and hop up. Do a little shake out if you want. Shake, 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 shake. Good job. Or if you're just living in that nice calm zone, that's okay too. It's a nice dreary day where I am. It feels like a nice calm day to maybe sit in that favorite spot in our home and read a book or draw a picture. So I hope you do something to make you grateful for the home that you have. And don't forget that every day that you get to spend creating something or being the best version of yourself, that's the best way to spend a day, right? Just like Dorothy learned, you can go all the way super far away, but at the end of the day, it's always good to be home. Thanks so much for joining me, friends. As always, head on over to Miss Cassidy Creates. Give us a like, a follow, a, a, a share, all that good stuff. If you want some other videos we've done, you can check out all of our videos from the past few weeks. There's another yoga story for the Lion King, if you feel like doing a little more yoga. There's some dance classes, there's some art activities, and there's some story time. So anything you feel like checking out, check out Miss Cassidy Creates for all of our old videos. If you want to share any pictures of you following along with our story, I would love to see them. Make sure you tag Miss Cassidy Creates. Thanks so much for joining me, as always, and you... Keep being yourself and don't forget to keep smiling. All right. Thank you, friends. Have a wonderful day. Bye.